Greetings, my name is Shea Baraka and I'd like to welcome you to the Skylight Gallery. Uh, the exhibition we have up this evening is uh, Soul Saxis, Medicine from Heaven, How African American Culture Cured the USA. Soul Sax will be conducting a workshop, an Orisha-inspired workshop this afternoon, and uh, we look forward to having you see that. Hello, my name is Soul Sax. I'm an artist born and bred Brooklyn, out here representing in um, Skylight Gallery, a 40-year-old bastion of bed -Stuy. I work in any medium available to me, or well, artists, is most profound. They can take an idea and express it in every single medium, whether it be poetry, music, dance, sculpture, painting, photography. I tried to do it all and tried to use it all as a tool to get my expression across. I'm celebrating my fifth Juneteenth Jubilee. Um, I celebrate Juneteenth to celebrate all of the culture soldiers that have moved us since the Civil War um, through um, um, Jim Crow, um, and now into the post-civil rights era, um, looking at the cultural tools and tactics that were used by um, um, our great African-American icons to change American culture from being so racist. And I feel that those icons used cultural tactics that actually have their in Africa. workshop today is a Orisha inspired workshop where I'm going to introduce participants to the various Orisha, their symbolism, the, the ideas behind them, and how they relate to contemporary culture. And then um, work with the participants to, for each one to choose an Orisha and create an image that depicts their personal perspective on what that Orisha means for them. So, so it's about finding finding aspects of these images that can work for the Orisha you're working with. So these were the warrior Orisha. Here are um, um, some of the um, well-known male Orisha, like Chango. Chango um, is, is lightning and thunder itself. It's fire and water. It's red and white. It's opposites like that. Chango uh, is represented in Nigeria. In, in Yoruba land, he's represented Lightning is represented by um, triangles coming down like this. They're thunder cells, right? Um, of course, we use lightning like this in, in American culture. Um, either way is fine for Chango. Both motifs work. The double-headed axe is, is a symbol of Chango. Um, the endless knot is a symbol of really all the Orisha. You can do the endless knot um, even bigger than that. You can, you can really get into the endless knot. Chango always keeps his hair in um, cornrows, usually zigzag cornrows, showing how crazy and, and full of game and, and improvisation his mind is. His older brother, Dada, wears his hair in dreadlocks, representing his creative mind just poking out of his head and streaming down onto the ground. Chango's father is a ganju. A ganju is the volcano and, and, um, and, and the idea of tectonics, you know, so if you see any volcanic images, any images of explosions, that's a ganju. A ganju is going to be wearing oranges and, and reds, whereas um, Dada is going to be wearing reds and whites, mostly whites, a little bit black involved with the dreadlocks. Um, over here you have Obatala. Obatala is, is the king of the white cloth, the king of cool, the king of, of, of reserve, the king of design and smooth elegance. Um, um, he's represented by the snail, which is supposed to have um, um, special cure. The snail water has special curing value. So, so, so if you have snails all over a figure, that would be Obatala healing that figure. Um, snail water is supposed to have healing effect. A horse tail whip, which is a, a whip made out of a horse tail because Obatala is too clean to have flies be landing on him. You know what I'm saying? He's the king of the white shop. He's the lead smith. All of the Orisha are some sort of smith, really. You know, you have Ogun, who's an iron smith. Obatala is the lead smith. Oshun is the brass smith. We'll get to her. Um, um, Yemaya is the silversmith. So they all work different types of iron. And, and then what's important is that in Yoruba culture, 
Um, the word for a person, Irin, is also the word for iron or metal. You know what I'm saying? So, say the word for person. Irin. I R E I R I N. Irin. So you have, oh yeah, I didn't mention Olokun. Olokun is the deep sea. Olokun can be either male or female or androgynous. Olokun is represented by octopus, by um, deep sea dwelling um, 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 fish, you know, um, clams. Well, I asked um, Saul to name an Orisha for me because I was drawn to Oya and Eshu, and he said, think about Olokun because of the dark navy blue that I, the indigo color that I wear, and the earrings, which are the colors of Olokun. With Dia, I would definitely go with Olokun. Olokun. Would you, would you Olokun. Olokun. Dark blue deep sea. Tell me more about Olokun. There's a pataki about Olokun that's my favorite pataki about Olokun. Olokun goes up to um, Good God Almighty, and Olokun's like, yo, why is it I have to take everybody's garbage? I have to take it all. I, I, I sit back, and, and the mountains throw out their garbage into the river, the rivers throw out all the land's garbage into the sea, and the sea dumps all of its garbage down into the deep to me. Why, God, do I have to take everybody's garbage? You know what I'm saying? I'm tired of taking garbage from people. You know? So God turns around and says, In fact, Olokun, I don't make garbage. These other foolish Orisha throw away my riches and don't recognize it for what they are. So in the end, all of their riches end up pouring down into you if you just have the patience to accept it. The imagery is this Orisha before there was male and female, before there was sexuality that is in the deep dark sea, which is the dark navy, the dark indigo, and but still is feels the light, knows the light, lives through trials and tribulations and takes on the burden of the world, the burdens of the world, the community, the family around her. But Spirit says, I didn't make those burdens. Humans made those burdens. They don't know that there are really riches. And if you persevere or let the burdens fall, riches are heaped on you. And all around you are riches and not burdens. And I really thought that was a beautiful story. And so I found the image, the image of the woman and wanted her in the deep sea surrounded by light, stepping with one foot, you know, her world is lived on one foot tiptoeing through the bristles of the tires and hopping from one to another trying to keep balanced, but if all else fails, we should remember there is support. There is support in the deep, in the dark, in the knowing, and in spirit, which is up here at the top, in the lights which surround and then the light on her head, one of the things that Saul was saying was that the, sh the shape of Olakun is of um, the, the diver bell, the deep sea diver bell of old time, which if you flip it around is the shape of a vessel. And I resonate very deeply with a vessel. I think of myself as a vessel. I have artwork that's in the shape of a vessel. And Olakun also is the keeper of all of the mineral riches at the bottom of the sea. And this is a crystal light which turns into a crown on her head, which is a reward for the patience of walking through the burdens of life. Oshumare is the rainbow, um, representing the rainbow as, as not just the, um, the um, weather element that we all know, but also representing the rainbow as a connected um, 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 serpent that holds us all together as a community. You know, so the serpent, the, um, the boa constrictor is associated with Oshumare. Um, Yemo Jaz, the, the mother of the children of the fishes of the sea, the Yoruba understood um, of evolution, they, they, as it is implied in her name. In Yoruba tradition, they would actually cut um, scarification to put gills on to their children's face so that when they return to Yemoja, Yemoja would recognize her children. Iya means mother, but it also means the owner of pain. 
the idea that to be a mother is, is to go through pain. Any images of people crying, people feeling down, that would be appropriate for Yego Ja. With the whole blue cell sentiment, you know, um, bringing in um, the moon, the stars, bringing in all of the romanticism that you want to bring in, all of that is Yego Ja. There is a symbol of Yego Ja that is specific to Africa, where Yego Ja is like this, and she has, she has mudfish, and Olokun is also depicted like this. She has mudfish's legs. So one leg, two legs, both of them are mudfish. And you can see up in this design, this is a Benin mask from the Edo people of Benin, who are deeply related to the Yoruba. And in this mask, you see Portuguese traders, but then you see the mudfish, which is like a catfish. It has whiskers, and it, and, and, and it produces a powerful electric charge. You have, yes? Yemaya. Um, um, Yemaya is the um, um, Cuban way of saying it. Um, um, Yemoja is the Yoruba way of saying it. Um, and and it's, it's short for Ia Omo Ja. Um, the owner of pain, who is, who is the mother, you know, because owner of pain means also mother, so the mother of the children of fishes. You know, so so it's really it's really um, talking about um, the children of fishes. But it's wonderful when you um, have it in the um, 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 the Cuban with Gemaya and you hear somebody like Cecilia Cruz singing Gemaya and you hear the pain in her voice as she's saying, you know what I'm saying? That's that's the blues, that's that's the emotion. Crenshaw and I had a great time at this Orisha art making collage workshop. The Orisha I focused on was Oshun and her colors are red and amber so it's like brass yellow and red together and she represents fresh water the ocean river to represent Oshun and I put jewels in her hair. So it's impossible for, for an Orisha to come at you against your will. The idea is that in order for two things to come together, there has to be mutual attraction between the Oris. There has to be a mutual sight, a mutual insight. And it is that insight that, that brings you to walk with one Orisha or another. Olokun, um, they feel, had polio and was actually, um, um, he was a king that was actually paralyzed like our Mosul, FDR, and, and, and that people who knew that the king was, was paralyzed, this would be a big issue, because the king is supposed to be perfect. So their explanation for it was that, no, he's not paralyzed. He has mudfish for, um, for legs, and if you mess with him, his authority will shock you like the electric mudfish shocks you. And an electric mudfish is about three feet long, and if you touch it, it has enough electrical shock to throw you 10 feet. So it's this idea of, 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 of electrical authority, you know what I'm saying? Now, when the Europeans came in, the, um, the mermaid became um, associated with something that's not quite an Orisha, it's not specific to the Yoruba, but the Yoruba celebrated and so do the um, um, Yoruba of the Americas in Brazil, Cuba and everything, and that is Mami Water. Mami Water. Mami Wada is, is, is the merman and the merlady. The, um, um, in Haiti, she's, she's celebrated as La Serena. La Serena is a road of hers okay. And La Serena is depicted as the mermaid. Okay. Okay. All right, um, um, like, the, like, like in the um, Greek tale, the siren. And, and Mami Wada is the idea of the outsider. 
becoming rich and famous and having success. So you're a foreigner in a strange new land and you look to mommy water to help you have success in this strange new land. And it's usually financial business success. I also have bristle paper if you like. There's different types of paper you can make for your base. This bristle paper is excellent. It gives you a nice strong base to work on. Although I don't necessarily understand the concept. I am an artist, so I came to create. So what I did was I came up with this beautiful black sister. Her skin spoke to me. And um, so I decided to use her. And being the hair artist that I am, I decided to give her um, twine hair. Um, I put the word up here, queen, but I actually put D-O-M. So this is her queendom. In the second collage, what I've done is I've created a male figure to counteract with the female collage that I did. And so it's his turn to cook, okay? And he's serving it up. I put the word sex up there because it's a powerful word. I just wanted to put it there to associate it with what I would consider a beautiful union. And it seems as if sex is on the menu, but it's not exclusively on the menu. I also have this wonderful metallic paper because remember I told you all of the Orisha are, 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 are metal smiths. So you, you, you have green metallic paper for Ogun or silver for Ogun. You have, you have red metallic paper or copper metallic paper for Oyak or brass metallic paper for Oshun and Chango. Both of these go green Oshun and Chango. Okay, my piece is about women, Obama's woman of the arc. Here they are, Oprah, Alicia Keys, Beyonce, and of course, Michelle. And showing you the raising of Obama, which I didn't put his mother in, which I will put her in afterwards. I couldn't find a good picture, but I am gonna put her in right under the word happiness, right over the word happiness, who raised a leader our president, our great president of the United States. And these are the women that I know that are definitely behind him, and I'm one of them, and I'm gonna add my picture to one day. And there you have it. This is my collage, Obama's Women of the Ark. So I needed to do this, I needed to play. I needed to play without expectations of being good. And so I just created a spirit guide and I'm calling her in the tradition of the Orisha, Jemaja. And I just went through the magazines and ripped out papers and laid it down. And the face is Fantasia. And I love that name, Fantasia, and that's what I want to bring into my life. But, you know, this is great for me because I give workshops, and it, it was really fabulous for me to be in a workshop being ministered to. So it's been healing for me, and I've had fun. Hello, my name is Sadaki Shikalia, and I'm at a workshop at the Art and Cultural Center, and the um, teacher or professor whose show is showing now is Soul Sachs. And he just did a workshop teaching us about different gods in African culture. And my uh, god is Yemaya, and that's the god of the ocean. And blue is his color, and the white zigzags, to me, sort of represents the water. And um, the circle, which is everlasting, the universe, and the peace zone. And the diamonds in the eyes, it's like the water, how it radiates, and also how rich and wealthy we are in the spirit. I did this collage and uh, the artist who was present among us 
I did a great job. His uh, introduction was very splendid. I wasn't too sure as to how I was going to bring this out to play, but when it was presented to the artist himself, he was well pleased. Okay, so that concludes our workshop for today, and uh, this is my piece, managed to get it completed. Uh, this is Yemen Ya. I've uh, added those elements, those colors that represent her uh, powers, silver, blue, green, and of course the moon, and the expansion of hair, which gives you an idea of what her energy is, her head is, and since all the Orishas are leopards, she's got her leopard spots too to identify her. Yeah, come in. Here we go.